not a fan. Um, United Methodist Beliefs get their name. And then one that will be a study that will be held in a home. This is, is this all there is? I'll let you look at those afterwards. Please sign up. If you're interested in these studies, that will determine what study we start on Sunday mornings. And also, if we do any home studies or studies through the week. So, when I'm going to ask you a favor. Could you take these back to the table in Fellowship Hall and line them up with the papers that are there? Thank you. Please uh, feel free to ask questions if you want. The sheets are just that I'm interested in this particular study, and we'll go from there. <laughs> hey, you guys got quite a turn with you. <laughs> Uh, don't, just because we walk up here doesn't mean you have to just immediately stop down here. It's all right. Uh, as we get ready for our prayer, you know, the river in uh, Christian history, had, in early Christian history especially, had a, a very significant place in their lives. John the Baptist baptized Christ uh, in the river. And many of the early Christians were baptized there as well. And in Acts 16, John tells us on the Sabbath, we went a little way outside the city to a riverbank where we thought people would be meeting for prayer. Let's approach the river of faith this morning as we prepare to worship our Lord. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the song? Oh, 
or maybe they're a new song for you to learn. And before you sing your VBS songs, hey guys, look this way. Before you sing your VBS songs, we'd like you to sing a song with us that's a favorite of ours. Now, several years ago, the bishop of our United Methodist Conference in Indiana used to say a phrase, and I've got the people out here who know what it is. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. And that is what this song talks about. God is good all the time. Larry's going to sing for us the, the chorus, and then we're going to join in. All right? So God is good all the time. Let's listen to Larry to get the rest of the words. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. All right, now let's talk about those words. God is good. Jim, can you roll them back to that first slide? God is good all the time. What's the next thing? He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. And then what do you think the next one is? God is good all the time. <coughs> Through the darkest night, his light will shine. And then God is what? God is what? All the time. Now to make it even more exciting for you, Mrs. Weaver has the shakers. Would you like to get shakers for this song? Ah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Come, right up, come right up here so the folks can see your beautiful smiles and faces. Right up, you can come up on that one. And you're done that. Come on up. Come on up. No. Okay. Congregation, will you stand and sing with us? Here we go. Oh. 
Robin, can we offer a prayer of praise to God? It's printed up here. It's printed in your... Oh, I'm sorry. That's after your song. I'm out of order. <laughs> Tell me, I'm out of order. After you sing, we're going to praise God again. All right. This week in EBS, the kids learned many different things about Jesus. The motto or the theme of EBS was discover, decide, defend. Discover what we know about Jesus. Um, decide that you're going to follow him and then defend your faith. And so this is one of their favorite songs. It's called More Than, what is it guys? Just a Good Man. More Than Just a Good Man. Are we ready, Jim? Yep.
died for our sins. All right, I want to talk a little bit about he was more than a good man, because you guys seem to really kind of take that story to heart this week. What was some of the evidence that you uncovered this week? Because you guys weren't secret agents. I want to make sure that we understand that we weren't secret agents this past week. And why are we saying we weren't secret agents?
sort of slow things down to a little different pace and be reflective for a moment. And we're going to ask you to join with us as we sing in the garden. <laughs> Verses 23 and 24. This is what the Lord 
says, Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom, or the powerful boast in their power, or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of God for the people of God. We say, thanks be to God. Boasting. That's what this says. Don't boast in things. We have grandparents here, I know. How many of you have ever boasted about your grandchildren? Be honest. <laughs> Be honest, yeah. You know, a few years ago, grandparents used to carry with them this little photograph book, just a, and we called them brag books. Brag books. Now we don't really carry the photographs, but we carry our phones, don't we? With pictures. Sometimes we carry them in our wallet. Um, I know that I've bored some of you with pictures of my grandchildren. And I brag on them. So I think that's a good brag when we're bragging and boasting about our grandchildren. But have you ever bragged or boasted about something and then regretted later that you said what you did? Maybe you bragged about how well somebody did something and then the next time they did it, they just fell flat. We, we've all been in that position where maybe we've boasted a little bit about ourselves and then, oops, we had to kind of take those words back because we really weren't as good at what we thought we were. There were a group of friends who became very weary of a friend who was boasting. He bought a new uh, foreign car, small car, and he was boasting incessantly about the great gas mileage he was getting. Now, this is probably true because it says it was a story in the Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids Press. So this man uh, just kept bragging about, oh, my car is doing so great with gas mileage. So his friends thought they would just get a little revenge and hopefully put an end to all of his bragging. So every day when the man was at work, one of them would sneak over to the parking lot and pour some gas into the tank. And so the gas mileage then, what? Kept, kept going up. Kept going up until he was telling people about this extraordinary gas mileage. I'm getting 90 miles to the gallon. And of course his friends were taking great delight in watching him try to convince people that that was the truth. And they just would stand back and chuckle, knowing all the time that he wasn't getting 90 miles to the gallon. Well, it, the prank got even better when they stopped putting gas in the car. Because all of a sudden, he's not getting 90 miles a gallon. And he could not figure out what was wrong with his car. That's the kind of boasting I think we're supposed to avoid, don't you? Uh, but his friends made, made good use of it and maybe taught him a lesson. Perhaps that's what's happened to us before, that we've been taught a lesson. We've bragged about something, we've boasted about something, and then we've been humbled by something that has occurred, or by someone else, or by God. So boasting, God says, is not really what I want you to do. So Jeremiah writes that God says we are supposed to boast about some specific things. Let's talk about what those are. First of all, I want to give you a couple of definitions. As you might guess, boasting can have a negative and a positive meaning to it. So let's talk first about the negative definition. Boasting is a statement in which you express too much pride in yourself or in something you have or something you have done or something you are connected with. Does that make sense? It's expressing too much pride. Got that? That's the negative side of boasting. And then the positive side, the positive definition is that 
You have a justified reason to be proud. Something uh, impressive that someone has or they have done or have seen accomplished might be rightfully boasted about. Now, if we look at the dictionary further, it gives some antonyms. What does that mean? Opposites. So what might be an opposite of boasting? Being humble. What else? Being, keeping those, being silent, keeping those things to ourselves. What might be the synonyms or the things that are like boasting? Bragging. What else? How about praising? We come here and we praise God. We use words like exalt. We lift up his name. We extol him. We bring glory and honor to him. That's the positive part of praising, isn't it? Jeremiah is saying if we're going to boast, we should be boasting about the God that we know. The God that we know. We should be boasting about who God is and his character, what he has done to provide for us. We should be boasting, prideful, praising, exuberant in our worship of this God that we know. So the question then is, how can we boast about God if we do not know him? doesn't happen, does it? We can't show God's picture on our phone. We can't really say to somebody, I've seen God and he looks like this. So we have to know God in other ways. You've heard me refer before to uh, an author, a pastor from the Kansas area who uh, has written many things. One of the studies, here's my other plug, one of the studies back here is Knowing, Loving, and Serving God from Adam Hamilton. And so today I'm going to focus just a little bit on that first section of Knowing God. And um, in this whole series, Adam says there are 15 traits of a deeply committed Christian. 15 traits that he believes are essential if you want to be deeply committed. In other words, if you want to really know God, know him well. You will carry these traits in your lives. You will show them. They'll be the characteristics that are uh, prominent and primary in your lives. Now, I'm not going to go over all 20, 15 today. Don't panic. I said 20, didn't I? Really scared you. I'm not going to go over all 15 of them. What I want you to hear today are just what it really means to know God. Five characteristics when you think about and to sort of evaluate your life on those characteristics. In other words, am I, am I gaining some, some knowledge of God? Am I deepening my understanding of God? And these are some ways to gauge it. These are the measures for us that we can strive to attain. So the first trait that shows that we know God is just that we understand Christian essentials. Now, when I talk about essentials, I mean basics. There are some Christian basics that we need to understand. So, Adam says we need deeply committed Christians understand the essential gospel on which most Christians can agree. And they are able to share intelligently with non-Christian friends. Now, some of you would argue that that adjective in there, intelligently. But you understand the basic premise of the whole gospel, and then you're able to share that with people who have not yet read. All right? Now, as we go through, you're gauging yourself where you are in that path. In your hymnals on page 880 and 881, if you want to pull those out, are two pieces of literature that help us know those basics in a very short form, or at least a portion of those basics. What did you find there? The Nicene Creed and the Apostles' Creed. So look, look down that listing of what they've written. It tells you what we believe. We believe in God the Father. We believe in 
Jesus the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the resurrection and the life everlasting. Five pretty basic beliefs. So if you think you're struggling knowing what those basic or essential beliefs are, keep that printed in front of you. Keep that somewhere. Keep it on your phone where you can open it up and see. I believe in. Those are the basics of Christian faith. And then you will be able to speak intelligently to those who have not yet met Christ. All right. Second characteristic. So the first one is just understanding the Christian basics. The second characteristic is having a, an understanding of the Bible. Now, does that mean you are all scholars and you know all things about all scripture? Do this with your head. No. It does not mean that. No. It means deeply committed Christians know the grand sweep of the Bible's story of salvation. We know a basic timeline of the events that happen. We understand that there is a divine human nature that this book talks about. And we know how to read the Bible to give us answers for our spiritual growth. Again, I'm going to plug Bible study. You're going to hear that a few times from me. Bible study. How do we know? How do we grow? How do we understand the Bible if we do not read it, study it, understand the principles? So, here's the quiz. What's the <coughs> overarching theme in the Bible, or as he calls it, the grand sweep of the Bible? What's this book about? Love? What else? Forgiveness? It's the story of God acting in our lives, isn't it? Isn't it? Forgiving us, loving us, rescuing us from our own sin. It's the story of salvation from beginning to end. All right, we passed. The third characteristic is understanding the basics of what your denomination believes. All right, so let's see. What basic denominational beliefs should we understand here today? What church do we belong to? The Methodist. I belong to the United Methodist Church. Sorry. Just... Kidding. Just kidding. United Methodist Church, United Methodists believe specific things in addition to those core essentials of Christian faith. So, uh, there are three general rules that govern our United Methodist Church. Anybody know those three general rules? I won't put you on the spot. I'll teach you. The first one is do no harm. Do no harm. The second one is do good. So you have sort of the bookends. Do no harm, do good. And the third one is stay in love with God. You want to say those with me? Do no harm, do good, stay in love with God. Those are pretty basic rules, aren't they? A good framework for us to live with it. And then in the United Methodist denomination, we have a specific emphasis on the grace of God. How God's grace comes to us and covers us and refreshes us and grows us. So United Methodist focuses on God's grace. There are some others, but again, I'm not going to do the whole lesson today. The fourth characteristic then deeply committed Christians understand how to apply their Christian faith to important ethical issues and they are committed to living out principles such as justice, integrity, peace, and the responsibility for the well-being of others. Now, in other words, we have a Christian ethic that we live by. And those are some of the components Back on Fellowship Point, I've put out some brochures for you to look at. Um, and our Book of Discipline has all of our social principles. And I also thought I had some brochures with just the social principles in them. I will get those for you so that you know exactly what we believe and where we stand on all kinds of ethical issues. But look in the back for some pamphlets. You are free to take those. They'll go a little deeper into what we're talking about today. All right, and the fifth characteristic that we're going to talk about today that shows that we know God is that we 
know God's will. Deeply committed Christians know the broad scope of God's purpose for human beings. Whatever could that be? What is God's purpose for us? Why did God create us? What is this life in this world all about? Let me give you some thoughts. We are here to bring glory to God in everything that we do. We're here to be in relationship with God. You remember that first story about people that God created? And we sang a song that talked about being in the garden. And God walks with me and talks with me. That's about being in relationship. In other words, God is trying to be transparent. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know him, to be in relationship. Finally, I would say that loving the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind is why we were created. God's purpose for us, to reflect back to him the love that he gives us. Now, those were, that was a pretty quick rundown of those five characteristics. Let's see how many you remember. First one is understanding Christian essentials or basics. Like, like the examples I gave you were the, in the hymnal. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm getting all the right looks. <laughs> Let me worry for a moment. Christian essentials. Secondly, have an understanding of the Bible. You can read it to get answers for life. Thirdly, you understand what the denomination emphasizes and the special things that they talk about. Um, and you and I think.